Hi, this is Adam from Small Town Machine Shop with uh, video two of the homemade rotary phase converter. In this video, I will be showing how to start it with a rope and uh, I'll go over exactly how I wired it. Again, electricity is dangerous. Be very, very careful about it. Protect things with fuses or I mean breakers. Ground everything. Do you know what a ground does? It means a breaker trips instead of shocking you. So, you know, ground everything. If you're not comfortable in the least bit when doing any kind of wiring, don't. If you have to be told to unplug a machine before you work on it electrically, this project it probably isn't for you. Um, I don't mean that to insult people. Safety first. I mean, it's, it's that simple. Safety first. So follow uh, amperages for the wires you're using, breaker sizes for the wires you're using and the motor you're using. Be careful of spinning shafts. Um, they can catch, you'll be surprised what a smooth shaft with a keyway in it will snag. Don't wear your bell bottoms on when you're walking around your shop while it's sitting on the floor. Be mindful of every aspect of the machine, electrically and physically. So we'll go over to the uh, setup and I'll bring you back. Okay, we're over here at the motor now. Again, this stuff is just temporary so I can show you this. I would not run this like this in any for any length of time. I just wanna have a clear way to show you. So there's the motor. Obviously you wouldn't ratchet strap it to a cart if you were going to keep it like this. So, I've wired it low voltage low voltage on this motor is 220 um, so I have my black wire and red wire these are the two incoming power wires there's the incoming ground grounded to the body of the motor this is the high voltage you know the one you just keep separate this white wire will be the generated leg. So these three wires are the ones coming into the motor. So up here, and again, I have these pulled out and stuff so you can see it. By the way, I like these, uh, these things are expensive, but I really like them. Especially when you swap your wiring around a lot like I do. So right here is the incoming power. As you see, the white wires cut there incoming red black and ground the ground is grounded so incoming power comes to here incoming power goes down to the, the three-phase panel and then one wire that's going down to the motor same with the other power wire the black one coming in to the panel, I mean out to the three-phase panel, one down to the motor. And the ground's all grounded and the case is grounded. The white is just coming up out of the motor, down through here to the three-phase panel. So, little junction there, they go down, they come into here. I have this outlet wired in for three phase and come over here I put my three phase motor back on the drill press this will be our our test thing so you can see it's actually generating power make sure it's off which it is These videos take a lot of prep work, so I hope you guys appreciate it. The 35, 40 of you that will actually watch this. So, plug in. Where's the ground one? There, drill press is wired in. Okay, the cable's not anything. Okay, going over there. Okay, now. 
obviously the motor is not going to start itself that's what the rope is for i'm going to button that up when i would do this permanently what i like to do is i put on the wire nuts and then i wrap it in electrical tape and then i use that abrasive electrical tape well not abrasive but it's like a cloth one it a uh, it has good abrasion resistance now I'll button all this up and i'll do that before i run it i'll button that up before i run it now the third leg is not consist i mean it's power it will start your motors but the it's not going to be a constant voltage it's going to jump around a bit even if you put capacitors on it it's not going to be able to dynamically change to meet the needs. It'll smooth it out and make it more constant. But as the load increases, it's not really going to change to follow that load. So the bigger motor, the bigger idler motor you can run, the less it seems to affect it in relation to the motors you're powering. Like this five horse will be powering a one horse motor and it's, on, on, it's a motor on a drill press, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, these are not good for like powering CNC machines and stuff with stepper motors and stuff like that. I've honestly never ran a three-phase welder off of a rotary phase converter, so I don't know about that either. In the final version of this build, I'm going to have a... The, my biggest motor right now is the 5 horse motor in the Taita. So the minimum motor size you would want would be a 10 horse idler. I'm putting in a 15 horse. So that seems to, the motors will last longer because these motors already ran as a phase converter. They're gonna run hotter and less efficient than they would normally. They won't have as long a life. Now, of course, depending on how much you use it, I mean, the life is still gonna be long. The last one I built I got 12 years out of, so, you know, take that for what it's worth. Also, this is not, this is not free energy that's coming out of this. When you size your wires and your breaker, you have to remember the power coming through those wires and that breaker are spinning this. Granted, there's no load on it, but still consuming power. And then that power is also, remember, jumpered off to the panel going to the other motor. So you'll be running a five horse motor at idle and then, or a slight load, and then the other motor. Keep that in fact. A lot of people I've seen will only wire it for this. But this doesn't generate, they think once this is powered, everything else, it doesn't matter. No, you have to factor all that in. The bigger motors you're running, it's running all these motors. It's not generating free power. So that is a very important thing to keep in mind. Now I got this strap on here to keep it from wiggling around. There, there's our start mechanism there. So I'll get everything buttoned up. I'll fire it up. And then uh, I'll go over the drill press and show that the drill press is working to show that the concept is working. Another thing, if you're starting with a motor of unknown, you know, you got it at an auction or a yard sale, check the continuities and stuff between that and the case. Make sure one of the windings isn't grounding out or anything like that. Spin it, make sure it's quiet. You know, just do your due diligence before you throw it into your system. So yeah, we'll get that started. And I'll go over the rope start method here in a bit. There's a rope start and there's another method I'll will not show but i will tell you because i'm not the biggest fan of it so yeah get this guy buttoned up here button up there and i'll bring you back okay sorry sorry to tease you in this video but what i decided to do is i'm going to do all the starting things in one video so this will be more of the wiring of it and go from there i'm going to do the pull start a three-phase motor the pony motor and that'll be probably it for that video because once the uh the other system is using the uh capacitors that's going to be a more of a built-in setup another thing i'll say the reason <laughs> the impetus for this is this is a 30 you know 
3500 RPM motor, you have to get that spinning about half speed before it will kick over. What happens if it doesn't is it'll slow down and then growl. So all my other three-phase motors are 1750, except for this one. And I've put the rope around it a couple times. This can't get it quite going. So I'm going to hook a pony motor up to it. And I'm pretty sure I have a shaft that, or a pulley I can make fit, the, fit that. Or I have something else in mind too. But I'll hook up a, no, a smaller, well, different motor I have. And I'll show you a rope starting it to show you that it can be done. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I just wanted to get all the, not in the video with the starting way. I just wanted to have all the starting ways in one video. So, okay. So, yeah. This is Adam from Small Town Machine Shop. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.